So today I'm going to talk about uh, drilling automation in OPC UA. And I'm going to try to give you some perspective uh, about what Slumberjay does and then what we're trying to do as an industry and, and you know, why, we're, why we're pursuing this. So, uh, so I'm going to give it my, my perspective and then I'm going to go a little bit, uh, just a little bit about what drilling rigs are, what drilling is, and some of the organizations that are involved, why we want to automate drilling, and then we're going to go a little bit about the architecture of the drilling automation and how we're using OPC UA as one of the standards to, to, help, us, uh, to help us pull all this together. So uh, my perspective, so I'm, I'm with Slumberjay. It's the largest oil field service organization in the world. So uh, the primary groups I work with are integrated project management and the drilling group. Uh, the, and, and so we, we make uh, products for the integrated project management is they actually own rigs. Okay, and then the drilling group goes out and they, they work on rigs. Okay, so, so it's a little bit different perspective from each one of those. Um, the drilling automation program is, is addresses both of those uh, uh, segments, and, and their primary goal is, is to develop and integrate uh, drilling automation algorithms in the, into the rig systems to optimize the drilling process. And the, with the goals of being uh, delivering delivering uh, drilling consistently and at the technical limit of the, tech, of the equipment and in the drilling environment. Additionally, I, I work for the uh, Society of Petroleum Engineers as a volunteer. I am, I, I am the Drilling System Automation uh, Technical Section Deputy Chairman. And, and in that group, we're trying to focus the entire industry on how, to, how do we get drilling automation uh, on, onto the rigs and, and make it so it's sort of plug and play when you go out and do drilling. Uh, drilling. So basically, I'm going to cover what drilling is. Uh, you have a, a, a BHA, which is the bore, uh, bottom hole assembly down here. It usually cons it consists of a bit, some sort of uh, motor, usually that's in there. There's measurements going on here. Sometimes there's a hole opener. Anyway, this is, this is drilling uh, at the bottom of a hole. Uh, it can be five miles away uh, drilling. And the, uh, uh, this is attached to a drill string, which is usually rotating. And, and it, the bus bottom hole assembly communicates with the rig via a, a mud pulse. So it's not electronic at all. It actually sets up a, a carrier wave in, in the mud and, and, and varies the phase of the, of the of a vibration in the mud. And we pick that up hole so you only get about 12 bits per second at, at the high end. Uh, usually you're at, when you're five miles out, you're maybe at a half a bit per second on, on, on when you're communicating. If you're commuti communicating from the rig down, you're, re you're really communicating at a rate of, of bits per minute. Okay, so it's, it's very, very slow. Um, at the rig, uh, measure, uh, you have a various equipment which is driving this. It's uh, in terms of hydraulics, in terms of uh, rotation and, and weight on bit. The, and then all the information which is uh, coming from downhole and surface equipment on the rig is transmitted back and forth, usually by a, v a VSAT to a base where there's experts, and these experts work, work together to communicate changes in the program and understanding of the formations that you're drilling. Uh, basic rig overview. Okay, so this shows a very small rig. Uh, this is one that's in Mexico, and, we're gonna, and I'm going to come back to Mexico in a minute. So this is one of the rigs that we used uh, on, the, on, the, on the examples I'm going to show you. Uh, this rig is a hydraulic rig. It has a, a hydraulically driven top drive here. It's on a, it's on a hoist. This, it only, this particular rig only drills one, one joint at a time. Uh, their offshore rigs can go up to five joints at a time uh, when, when they're pulling these things in. There is a, a digital con uh, control system here, and then there's mud pumps which, which drive all the hydraulics in uh, through the drill pipe out of the bit and then clean, up, clean the hole as, as it drills. So, uh, Attached to this, and what, what is really driving the system is, is, is there is an auto driller, and the auto driller uh, is, is a piece of automation that's, that's already out there. And what it does, it helps the driller to maintain either a rate, a rate of penetration or, or a weight on bit so that he can, he can drill uh, more easily and not have to worry about you know, trying to release a brake, which is a, a traditionally like a mechanical rig would be. Uh, and then there's a whole host of sensors which are all over the rig. Uh, this, one example of this is a standpipe pressure sensor. And this is how you actually record the telemetry. That, that sensor is the one that actually pits up the telemetry. It's transmitted back to the acquisition system that decodes all of that. Um, so drilling rig communication. Uh, on the rig, it's, there's, every rig seems to be different. It really varies by the manufacturer and what's there. So you have uh, all the field bus technologies are there. You have Profibus, Field Bus, CAN Bus, Ethernet, IP. A whole host of homegrown systems and standards on, on all of these rigs. Uh, 
proprietary technologies and scan rates are you're generally talking about 10, 10 milliseconds on here. And you can see like the various, the various things on here where we have a, uh, a mud pump controller, it's connected to standpipe, I mean strokes per minute counter, pressure sensors, and then a top drive controller which would be maybe an RPM sensor, temperature, temperature sensors, things like that. And these are, again are all fed back to this rig control system, usually integrated into one system. Um, and, and, but, but there are cases where, again, like you'll have one control for the pumps that has nothing to do with the control for the top drive or anything like that, so it's un unintegrated. Uh, downhole is a, is, a com is a completely different world. There's lots of, lots of pieces of a, a, so a dumb iron where you have like the bits, the holes, hole openers, and you start moving up into things, these things which are actually doing some sort of actuation, like the motors, the rotary steerables, do active type control. The measurement tools where, you, where you're taking uh, the direction and inclination, uh, you're trying to get formation properties by looking at, uh, by using gamma ray, and then also uh, sensing drilling dynamics and how much vibration are you getting, how much, how much weight are you uh, transmitting axially down the hole. And then the telemetry, which again transmits that back up. So you have uh, the mud pulse, e-pulse, which are doing it. And then the newest portion which is coming into drilling is a wire drill pipe. And the wire drill pipe offers the capability of going from this 12 bits per second up to megabits per second. So. This right here, this picture is a picture of a rotary steerable, uh, which is the, uh, a sort of an active control of trajectory. And I put this up here ma mainly because what, what we see now is that there, there's some automation you can do it on, on the surface, but a lot of automation, it, because of this, this, this sort of break um, that you have from using the, the mud pulse and the lack of communication, you have to put automation down holes. So you have uh, systems which you have to, have to develop down there, a lot of electronics, very expensive to develop. And you put that down hole to do uh, a closed loop control down there. And then what you do is you send a command down to it, and then it, then it tries to, to do whatever you commanded it to do, for example, to m maintain a particular direction or, or turn rate. And, and uh, so that would be a, a rotary steerable system, which is a pit, what's, shown, what's shown in that picture, which has a, uh, an actu it actuates right here, and it points the bit in a particular direction to, to turn and, and steer the well wherever you need it to go. All right. So, what this picture is, is a picture of why we do automation. Um, this, this is one of the very first instances of running automation in the, in the oil field. And it, uh, and it pretty well shows definitively that, that you need to, that automation makes a huge difference. Um, so what, on, on a well platform, actually using the, the rig that we showed, uh, similar, it's actually a similar rig, uh, they, they drilled four, four wells. Uh, off, off this platform. They're, up, they're all about to the same depth because you're trying to go up to the same formation and then they drill out directionally from there in different directions. The first four wells, uh, they drilled by themselves and then we introduced uh, a, a, a program, what it did, it recommended settings to drill with, to the driller. It actually didn't cl completely close the loop, it just advised the driller to do these things. And what, what you see here is that it went from days down here of, of actually drilling this particular depth and, and where we went from one to two to three to four, it went, and it was scattered over between seven and nine days to drill over this section. It went to this very, very tight grouping of, with there's only a, about eight hours from the maximum to the minimum here. So it became very consistent, very pr predictable. And you can see that these curves almost completely overlap, especially six, seven, eight. And this fifth one is where they, they first introduced it, and they were, what they were trying to do is learn how to use the application. And after they, after they got it introduced, they went to these other wells, and they, the consistency, the, the consistency, the repeatability, the predictability of it, especially when you're talking about value contracts where you bid on the total well, not the day rate of, of drilling, makes a big difference in those cases because you, then you can reliably predict how, how long it's going to take you to drill the well so you can not overbid or underbid the, uh, uh, the particular contract. Results to date uh, in terms of automation on this particular application. Uh, in terms of drilling, which is ROP, rate of penetration, uh, in, in an advised mode, we see around uh, 30, 37 percent gain uh, on average. If we go to closed loop control, we're seeing around 53.1 percent average gain in ROP, uh, and, and th these are quite remarkable. In fact, it's this this jump is uh, you know see that seeing that extra 15 percent just in just clo closing loop that the driller is not having just to follow the advice that it's actually immediately fed into the system is making making a reasonable difference and, and further proving that that having these systems directly controlled and direct access to the rig control systems is good. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of this for, for time's sake, but um, I'll, go, I'll go into this one piece, which is 
the, the D, SP DSATS has a high level architecture which, we, which we're trying to, to push out to all the rig systems. And, that, and what we see here is, is you have various control systems like the mud pump, top drive, and, and systems over here. These are connected back to this central control system. And then there's this comm server which we put in place to sort of, which isolates the two, uh, the, what, you're, what you're trying to control with, like the, the ROP application from the rest, rest of the rig. And, uh, and so this section, is, it, tries to, it tries to, we're trying to address what actually this thing does and what, this, what the communication is on it. And so, um, and primarily, you know, we're trying to address a lot of these issues that a, a driller is responsible for. And, uh, and you can see most of, most of if, you, if you read, if you can read really quick, okay, that, the, that most of his job is not about drilling. It's actually about ensuring personnel and the rig can, can competently work. It's about, is it, is it safe? Is the equipment maintained? Is the world war under control? The last thing he's worried about is drilling within the technical limits. Okay, so then, and that's what we're trying to make him do better. So. Um, I'll, skip, I'll skip this one. This is, well, actually, I'll just quickly. So in order to, induce, re, uh, to introduce automation quickly into the system, what we have, we tried to develop a real, really intuitive interface so that we can just plop, the, plop this thing in front of him and he, and he can start using it. This is, this is um, actually sort of modeled after a Wii uh, to, to actually get the, it's very simple. He, see, he can see recommendations for our weight on bit and RPM. He can do a downlinking from here if he needs to. But it, but it introduces automation very quickly to the driller. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna skip these pieces. Actually, one, I think this is important to Tom. <laughs> so, why we chose OPC UA? Um, so there were, there, we could have chosen Profibus or anything like that. Uh, what, a lot of the, what, what are the reasons we chose this? It, you know, we, we were really looking for an industry standard that was going to last. We didn't want to go with, with OPC DA, DA because of all the issues with COM, uh, that, that, and COM and DCOM that we had had. And the availability of the off-the-shelf components was a, was a big piece that we had clients and servers and SDKs that we could pick up and just start using. Uh, it, it was very compatible with many of the SCADA systems out there. Uh, the maintainability, the setup, and all these things, making make sure all those things were already, already there. Uh, we didn't want to have to write a lot of this infrastructure. And we wanted to be able to say, as we went to uh, any, any of the companies that were trying to work in the area, this says, oh, well, you just go out and buy an OPC UA server, get your dri drivers communicating, and then it's ready to go. Um, and the last, the last piece I think is a, is a, is a really piece, is a, is a really important piece, is the, is the information model. Where, and over the last 15 years we've been developing WITS, WITS ML, which is a, a large information model specifically, specifically for drilling. And it's used throughout the industry. So we would like to sort of pair the direction that WITS ML is going and Energistics with OPC UA and be able to sort of combine these together. And the, and the OPC UA having the ability to, to, to apply an information model which, which could pull these together is, is, uh, is a, a big benefit of what we're looking for. Okay, and now I'm gonna follow up with uh, one Last slide here. I'm going to skip these because those are really specific things about how we did the architecture on, on for Schlumberger. And um, I'm going to finish with, with this one slide. So the, this is where we're looking at in the industry. Uh, and this is the SPED set, so that's the Society of Petroleum Engineer Drilling System Automation Technical Section. And there's a comms a communications team inside of it. In uh, 2011, we developed a prototype and demoed the automation of a top drive uh, using the DSATS architecture. It, it was very, very successful. We had many companies involved, including, including OPC Foundation, that came in and, and supplied a, a contractor for us to help us get all this stuff implemented. In 2012, uh, after that, we had to really clarify what was our technical direction. And this is, I think, where you, know, you start looking at standards. And this is where ISA 95 really helped. It said, you know, what are the different levels that we need to automate at? Where, can we, where should we be focusing? Because when you say drilling automation to many people, they were, they were all over the map in terms of enterprise all the way down to the, the PLC level. And so now what, we, what we've defi decided to do is, is go into a, a drill a stand pilot. And we're right at this point uh, defining the use cases. And we're working with the, the OGI, OPC Foundation, WITSML to try to define the information models and the technologies and then the equipment interfaces and the contextual data, how we're going to pull all this stuff together uh, over the year to develop a pilot and white paper by the end of the year. And this is where I think yeah, automation groups can come in to help us. We already have some help from the OPC Foundation on this and OGI. Uh, but it, more people here might, after we start getting past the use cases, could, you could start seeing how, auto, how automation will actually and automation technologies could start fitting into the process. Okay, I'm gonna end there, okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs>